Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, good to see you all. I think there were more of them in your class, right? I don't remember, I didn't teach your last two semesters. Yes, ma'am, we were about uh, more than 30. More than 30? Yes, we were more than 30 at the, when we were at the hostel. Oh, uh, am I am I audible, clear? Do I need to make my volume louder? A bit louder would be good. Is this is this fine? Yeah, that's that's fine. This is better. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so good to see uh, three and three six of you. Uh, welcome back to class. Um, very nice to see each one of you. I can't see your faces though, but at least you're. Uh, you know, your pics on your uh, profile. Um, yeah, so did you get to read the introduction and uh, did you get to have a look at the notes? Yes, no? Not really, ma'am. When was it posted? Sorry? Uh, I haven't yet. I mean, I, I didn't know. The, the, the you haven't notes. seen? Uh, what about the others? I posted it on, um, uh, I think, on Friday or Saturday? Yeah, Friday or Saturday, I think. So I posted the uh, the notes for the biblical basis on 8th January and then uh, welcome and the course content for children's ministry on 7th. Do you all get to see it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes, okay, good. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so before we begin our class, uh, can somebody just um, start in a word of prayer, please? Anyone can just lead us in prayer? I'll pray, Pastor. Yeah, thank you, Erin. Father, we give all glory and honor to you for a blessing this and a new year, Lord Father, to learn and to equip a new word, Lord Father. As we go deeper in your word, Lord Father, Lord, that teach us, Lord Father, and Holy Spirit, Lord Father, as we know that, Lord Father, you are the best counselor, best teacher, Lord Father. Mm -hmm. And Lord Father, I pray for um, for, for all the students and for for Pastor uh, Selena, Lord Father, give her wisdom and knowledge, Lord Father, as, as she teach you your word, Lord Father. And I pray for each and every one of the students. Lord Father, prepare our heart, open up our heart, our spiritual eye, our spiritual heart to receive your word, Lord Father. Lord Father, starting from today and words, Lord Father, till the end of this semester, Lord Father, be with us. Lord Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, uh, uh, we're going to, uh, you know, you might be expecting uh, in your, uh, I don't know if there's, they have made the changes in the uh, timetable, you know, um, and you would have seen that uh, it was youth ministry uh, today and it was children's ministries class yesterday. But uh, we just decided that we will do um, children's ministry th uh, the first two months of this year, that is Jan and Feb. And then we'll do youth ministry in um, uh, March and April. Okay, so Jan and Feb, I'll be taking your classes on Monday and Tuesday. And if uh, March and April, um, Pastor Roshan will be taking your classes on uh, youth ministry. I hope that's fine. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, how many of you all are involved in children's ministry? Not right now. Okay. Before we, uh, I used to be. In the, uh, Okay, at least you've involved in children's ministry. Anyone here involved in children's ministry at any point of time? Yes, even me, Pastor. Uh, two years back, I was serving in my, uh, in my ministry. Serving okay. In ministry, yeah. Okay, Aren was also serving in the ministry. Dave was also. Prince has never been in uh, children's ministry. Okay, that doesn't matter. What about Kannan and Thomas yeah, and Kiran? Uh, yeah, even I also uh, been in the children's ministry. You've been in children's ministry? I couldn't hear you clearly. Sorry, Thomas. I was. You was. Okay, good. Okay, so Kannan says no and Kiran also says no. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so then what is your, because most of you haven't been a part of children's ministry, then what is your expectation about children's ministry? 
or what is your expectation of this class uh, are you excited to take this class because uh, you know uh, you might be thinking i've i've um, never thought of doing children's ministry and uh, i'm not going to be involved in doing children's ministry and uh, why should i take this course right did this thought come to your mind or you just going with the flow okay this is what they put this is what i have to take and this is what i have to do to finish my course can i just have some inputs what uh, yes ma'am actually um, the children's uh, it's a very special because what we saw in the young age that they be bear fruit in their uh, when they grow grow up mm -hmm. so it is very important how to minister among the children so the seed the word of god among the children uh, i was uh, ministered uh, most two three years with uh, vbs and uh, sunday classes things and all so mm -hmm. they they catch the words very easily and remember the teachers as well so that mm -hmm. much the impact will made on the children so i'm excited to learn more how to do more effective uh, in in midst of the children Okay, thank you, Thomas. Uh, what about uh, the others? I mean, uh, like Kiran says, uh, you know, she's never been involved in children's ministry. Prince, Kannan. So, what is your expectation of this class? Uh, are you uh, excited about this class? Are you interested in taking this class, or you're just going to do it because you have to finish this course? Uh, yes, ma'am. Exciting. The children's ministry and. one 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 thing from my side the children is based mam foundation if we teach and and something which is teach and so they may know then the found foundation the beat it is strong then already they if later on they will become a mature and a youth then they will never be fell down and all so many yeah. okay so kiran is saying that and thomas saying this is the foundation and thomas was saying that it's so important to give uh, teach them god's word because they're so receptive they just receive it um you know and kiran is saying that when we build this strong foundation now um you know uh, when they grow up to be young people youth they will not depart from the godly ways yes what about kannan and prince jamam yeah, uh, it's exciting uh, i think uh, in the church uh, children also is there so we need to learn the how to uh, build them from uh, little to uh, up so it's uh, it's time to learning but i i didn't uh, attend the sunday school also in the children ministry so i am so oh, okay. excited waiting yeah okay good so it's just good to hear uh, your perspective so i have this idea in the back of my mind when i'm preparing when i'm teaching so i don't assume that because i've been in children's ministry and i've been in sunday school all my life i mean most of my life not all my life when i was a kid and uh, you know uh, in vbs and i've been doing uh, children's ministry so i shouldn't come from that perspective that all of you know most of it so this uh, background just helps me to even prepare my classes and to also know to what extent i need to uh, you know go deeper and how i need to explain uh, yeah like uh, prince said it's um, uh, children are also part of the church very well said it's so important and so they are integral part of the church they also need to be ministered to and uh, you know um, uh, because they are part of the church yes that's very important so it's good that you've come with an open mind to learn uh, what about kannan yeah i am also same as uh, prince okay it's okay thank you to... yes go ahead kannan uh, this is very important to do with uh, children's so they can um, yeah do better in their uh, youth okay thank you okay so um, a good uh, you know background that i could get from all of you uh, hear from what you have to say about um, uh, you know your perspective on children's ministry and this course okay so uh, we'll um, 
uh, we'll see the importance of uh, children's ministry. And I'm sure that uh, even if you're not going to be involved in children's ministry, um, you know, or you've already set your mind into, you know, doing a uh, pastoral ministry or being an evangelist or being a missionary, uh, but also you're going to have children and uh, you can simultaneously even minister to them. So you can know how to minister uh, from, you can learn some of the, uh, you know, tools that you can use to minister to children. Uh, or even if you're pastoring a church, you know, you'll have uh, children under, I mean, children are part of the church. So, if, you know, the children's ministry will also be under your uh, purview, your overview. That's something that you need to take care of. So you can just give the teachers a few guidelines from what you're learning. Uh, you can share the importance, uh, the biblical mandate, the biblical importance of teaching, training children and how they can go about, uh, you know, how you uh, they can go about building the children's ministry that has already been established and you can, you know, you can kind of build it up uh, to what God wants uh, uh, you to do in, in that in that uh, church that he has planted you or the place that he has planted you. And also, if uh, you are not very sure, you know, which ministry you need to take or God, you know, this, uh, this course can also, God can stir up your heart the Holy Spirit can stir up your heart um, and burden your heart for children and God can lead you into doing uh, uh, children's ministry. You know, when I was, uh, before I joined children's ministry, I never actually, um, I loved children. I was ministering to children, but I never thought I would be into full-time uh, uh, children's ministry. I always wanted to work with, uh, you know, uh, uh, with uh, older people uh, and uh, minister to them. Uh, basically uh, into counseling and things like that. But I saw God just moving me and uh, you know, steering up my heart for children. And he's always been leading me every step of the way into children's ministry. So we never know what uh, the Lord has for us and how he's, you know, uh, maybe turning uh, the plans that he has for us. And if you're uh, waiting on the Lord for what you need to do after you finish your Bible college, maybe God can steer your heart up even for children's ministry. So we can, uh, you know, um, uh, Anyways, um, attend this um, sessions or this uh, this classes with an open mind, just to learn to build ourselves up, so that we can build others uh, who are not able to get into any Bible college or learn about uh, children's ministry. Uh, you know, just help them, give them some tips, tools, um, and uh, just get them going into being effective ministers, uh, in ministering to children. Okay. So before we um, go into this whole course, we will look at um, you know, why is ministering to children very, very important? Or why is children's ministry uh, important? I'll just um, uh, present these. Okay, it's not coming up. Okay, so can you see the slide presentation? Yes, yes no? Yes. Okay. Okay, so here we see that, you know, um, more than half of the people who believe in Jesus do so by the age of uh, 12. You know, when we are in church, we are so uh, actively involved in evangelism and, in, in, uh, you know, having programs to, uh, you know, speak the salvation message to lead people into accepting Christ as their personal savior. But we see we have a, a whole group of, um, you know, uh, people, uh, children who, you know, uh, are willing to readily accept Jesus, you know, just before the age of 12. So children's ministry is very important because because, you know, more than half of the people who believe in Jesus do so by the age of uh, 12. Okay. 
So by the time a child is nine year old, their basic moral foundation has been uh, formed. So we see that it's very important that, um, you know, uh, we uh, minister to children because it is a, a very uh, important uh, uh, stage or a phase in a person's life. Because by the time a child is uh, nine year old, they, you know, have a basic moral foundation, what is right, what is wrong. And after that, to change it kind of becomes very, very uh, difficult. So, you know, see, uh, just ministering to children uh, at a very young age, um, you know, sharing with them the biblical truths, uh, teaching them, uh, you know, uh, 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 the laws, the commandments, uh, and what is what God requires of them, just builds in them a moral foundation of what is right, what is wrong, what they should do, what they shouldn't be doing. And when they, you know, grow into teenage and, uh, you know, youth, uh, they will have the strong moral foundation, and that will become the basis for which they will make their decisions, their choices, and live the rest of their life. Another important thing why we need to be, uh, you know, children's ministry is important is because by the age of um, 13, a child has formed their basic beliefs about the nature of God, the reality of the Bible, uh, the existence of an afterlife, and the everlasting love of Jesus. Okay, so um, so by the age of 13, they've already have a basic, uh, uh, you know, belief system or religious belief system about who God is, what uh, he means to them, uh, how he relates to them, their relationship with God, uh, the Bible, whether it's the truth, whether they should follow it, or whether it's just a book of laws of do's and don'ts. Uh, and also, you know, um, what is their existence? What is their purpose? Why God has created them? Uh, what is uh, going to happen after death? And also their, you know, their relationship in their, with regard to their love for Jesus. So all this is formed before the age of 13. So we see that, you know, these uh, formative years of a child's life is so important. And we think that, you know, what will a child understand? What will a child know? Uh, you know, there's no point in uh, teaching them all of these things from uh, God's word. Just tell them some basic stories, uh, kind of repeat the same stories of David and Goliath or Zac Zac uh, Zacchaeus, you know, and um, because we think they are not able to understand and we kind of give uh, uh, just give them like milk uh, and we we don't give feed them with food and um, a solid meat but we tend to do that for youth and adults but we see that you know they become they become more resistant because they've already formed their basic belief systems their moral values are already built and it's so difficult to break through but for children, you know, it's they're very easy um, uh, uh, to speak to for for us to explain to them, and so we see it's so important uh, uh, to minister to children, not just give them, uh, you know, milk, but give them solid food as well. Because even when they're growing physically, uh, you know, uh, we see that when they're growing physically. Um, uh, do we, do does a parent uh, you know continue to give a child milk uh, from from day one they are born right up to you know uh, uh, they are about thirteen or fourteen years old? What do you think? Is a mother just feeding a child milk from the day the child is one day old to the to the day a child is thirteen year old? Yes, no. Yeah. No, uh, you know, we see that, uh, you know, from day one, the mother uh, is feeding the child milk. But as the child grows, uh, you know, in a couple of months, the, the, uh, the mother kind of uh, gives, it semi, gives the child semi-solid food. And then, we you know, the mother starts feeding the child as the child grows into one, one year old, two year old with more rice and chapati and, you know, whatever uh, diet or food the child can eat. So we see that it's not milk throughout. So here also, even uh, when it comes to spiritual uh, uh, nurturing and spiritual feeding of a child, you know, uh, it's important that we just don't give them uh, milk, just give them stories from God's word and, you know, uh, uh, just finish a, 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 a Sunday school class uh, or a children's church class. But we need to teach them more solid 
uh, meat from God's word. That means give them more uh, theological training and teaching. And that is what we do at uh, APC Children's Church. If, you, if you've noticed, uh, you know, at APC Children's Church, uh, uh, our curriculum that we have for children is uh, all based on the courses that we are teaching in uh, Bible college. Uh, of course, it is uh, uh, written uh, according to their age specific uh, needs and uh, development. Um, but we see that even uh, uh, children in, uh, in grade two to grade four, they're learning about biblical covenants, they're learning the doctrine of God, they're learning about the Holy Spirit. Uh, because in school also they are learning, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, more detailed things. They're not just learning A, B, C, D for, or one, two, three or numbers. Or, you know, they're learning They uh, each year They uh, as they keep going into each class, they're learning more details uh, about the same subject, but in a more deeper way. So even when it comes to uh, children's ministry, even comes to teaching children from God's word, you know, just not uh, telling them Bible stories, but teaching them the solid food or meat from um, God's word, okay? So th this is why it is important for us to do children's ministry or to minister to uh, children. Now we look at the biblical basis um, and the mandate for um, uh, children's ministry. So what is a biblical basis and the mandate for uh, children's ministry. Okay, we see that uh, in God's plan, you know, he had her plan for uh, children as well. And we see this right from uh, Genesis. Now, um, the the next few slides that I'll be putting up, um, you know, uh, will have a lot of uh, uh, scripture references and uh, they are on the screen. So I'd like you all to keep your Bibles opened. And, you know, as I uh, request, uh, one of you can keep uh, reading these uh, passages out loud, if it's all right with you all. So um, we see that in the very beginning, you know, God had this whole concept of family in his mind from the very beginning. And we see that God created families in the very beginning. He created Adam and Eve, and we see Adam and Eve had uh, children. And uh, uh, and how do we know that it was, uh, that, you know, the concept of family was in God's mind from the very beginning? We read this in uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Can somebody read it out loud for us, please? God blessed them and said to them, In the earth and subdued it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Thank you. So here we see, you know, God blessed them. Who did God bless? He blessed Adam and Eve. And what did he say? Be fruitful and increase in number. So here we see that, you know, God had. A, 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 a plan in his mind for family um, and God's plan for children was from the very, very uh, beginning. He, we also see uh, in Genesis chapter 17, verses 6 and 7, that God chose uh, and established Abraham's family as the family of promise. So he chose Abraham through whom he would, you know, establish his plan, his purpose, his uh, his promise uh, for the generations to come. Uh, and uh, we read this in Genesis chapter 17, verse, verses 6 to 7. Can somebody read that loudly, please? I will give you many descendants, and some of them will be kings. You will have so many descendants that they will become nations. I will put my promises, a promise to you and to your descendants in future generations. As in everlasting covenant, a covenant, I will be your God and the God of your descendants. Thank you, Erin. So here we see that, you know, God is establishing a covenant, not just with one person, uh, but through this person, Abraham, he's establishing, uh, establishing his covenant uh, uh, and his promises for his descendants as well. That is his children's children for the generations to come that he will be their God. And, uh, you know, and he will establish his promise and his covenant through Abraham's uh, descendants. And uh, we can also read Genesis chapter 17 verses 9 to 14, please. Can somebody read that? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> The mark of the covenant, nine. Then God said to Abraham, Your responsibility is to 
obey the term of the covenant you and all your descendants plan have this continual responsibility this is the covenant that you and your descendant must keep each male among you must be circumcised you must cut off the place of your for for skin as a sign of the covenant between me and you from generation to generation every male child must be circumcised on the 18th day after his after his gen his birth this applies not only to members of your family but also to the servant servants of the born in your household and the foreign born servant whom you have purchased all must be circumcised your bodies will bear the mark of my everlasting covenant any male who fails to be circumcised will be cut off from the covenant family for breaking the covenant yeah thank you kiran so here we see that god is telling abraham uh you know giving him a command and telling him that you know you have to do this uh you know ritual of circumcision as um, uh, to keep the covenant that uh, he's making with um, Abraham uh, for generations to come and he's saying that you need to uh, you know circumcise every male among you who is 8 days old so a child as well so here we see in this just there are more uh, scripture references in the bible but i'm just choosing a few of them uh, to see that god has a plan for a family the concept of family was in god's mind from the very beginning okay and in that concept of family it you know family is not just husband and wife but also children and so here we see that god has a plan for children from the very uh, beginning okay and the next thing is we see that god not only has a plan for children in the family but also god has a plan for uh, children to be trained in his word okay for children to be trained in his uh, word we have this um, uh you know very uh, familiar verse that we all know from second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 where it says all scripture is god breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training and we see that uh, you know this is a, a mandate or this is a a a law this is something that god has established uh, throughout scripture that his word be taught his word be uh, reiterated again and again be uh, uh, be spoken out again and again the laws being taught again and again uh, to people and to the generations that are to uh, come so we see that all scripture is god breathed and is useful for teaching rebuke in correcting and tr uh, training and this is not only for adults or for youth but also for uh, children so we'll see the importance god placed in uh, uh, teaching children we we'll look at genesis chapter 18 verses 17 to 19 can somebody read that loudly please and abraham said to god hold that is ishmael might live before you then god said no sara your wife shall bear you a son and you shall call his name isaac i will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants are you reading from genesis 18 uh, verses 17 to 19 okay i'll read that then uh, the sorry, lord said Yeah, no worries, Thomas. I'll read it. Then the Lord said, "Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on the earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised." 
him. Okay, so here we uh, read again, uh, you know, uh, about Abraham, and uh, we're saying uh, we're seeing here that you know God chose. Why did God choose Abraham? Uh, of course, you know uh, we know that it was because of his faith that he had in um, in God. But here we also read that God is saying, "For I have chosen him." God is saying, I have chosen Abraham so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and uh, just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised. So we see that, you know, um, uh, God chose Abraham because he knew that he will direct his children and his household and teach them the ways of the Lord and doing what is just and right in the ways of the Lord. So, you know, uh, even as, um, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll soon be parents, uh, you know, have your own family. And so this is so important. If you have to see God's uh, promise or his covenant promise being passed on from you to your children. It's important that you uh, teach your children, direct them in the ways of the Lord and doing what is right and just. And if you want to see um, God's covenant promise being established uh, uh, in, in among his people, you know, it's important that we also teach and pass on the laws and the commandments and what God requires of us, teach it to our uh, children even in church okay the next one is exodus chapter 12 verses um, uh, 24 to 27 here uh, one of you can read it but before we before you read it i'll just uh, uh, you know give you a background you know here we see um, god giving instructions to moses and aaron about the passover how to celebrate the passover uh, uh, the first passover that they had in egypt and uh, uh, moses and aaron takes these instructions that god gives them and they um, and he they they go and uh, give it to the elders and the elders go to their own households and uh, they give the instructions of the Lord. So can somebody read uh, 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 Exodus chapter 12, verses 24 to 27, please? That's right. And you shall observe this thing. Things we can't hear you, Prince. For you and your soul, uh, your sons forever. It will come to pass. So uh, yeah, now we can hear you. Now? Yeah. And you shall observe these things as an or I think we we just hear a one or uh, uh, you know three words and then your uh, voice is cut off. Audience for you and your sons forever. Okay. Okay. Don't. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Kiran. Remember, these instructions are a permanent law that you and your descent land must observe forever. When you enter the land of the Lord has promised to give you, you will continue to observe this ceremony. Then your children, your children will ask, "What does this ceremony mean?" And you will reply, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, for he passed over the house of the Israelis in Egypt. And so, and though he stuck the Egyptians, he spread our families. When Moses had finished speaking, all the people bow down to the ground and worship. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Kiran. Uh, thank you, Prince. So here we see that, uh, you know, um, God is giving them instructions about how to uh, celebrate or keep the Passover uh, uh, feast. And he's saying, uh, he's telling Moses and Aaron, tell the people that even when they enter the promised land, the land that he's going to give them, they have to obey this ceremony. <coughs> Sorry. And when the children ask them what this ceremony means, you need to uh, tell them okay so it's not uh, saying when when youth ask but it's saying children so even when children ask you know uh, explain to them don't just say that they might don't think that they might not understand there's no importance in uh, it's not important for them to know right now when they grow up they'll understand but it says when your children ask you know tell them what 
they did, what was the ceremony, how they went about doing it, why they had to do it, and what God had done for uh, them. So why is God, uh, you know, uh, specifically saying that when your children ask, because uh, God knows that, you know, at, at a very young age, children have to be molded in the ways of the uh, Lord, at a very young age, they can um, they can they have that kind of understanding or that mindset to uh, to to know who their God is, to understand who their God is, to know His love and what He's done for them, and um, so that they can have a relationship with Him uh, from a very very um, young age. So here we see the importance of. Um, of, of God telling Moses and Aaron, teach the children, even the ceremony. Sometimes, you know, uh, uh, when we're seated in church, if uh, the children ask us about what is Holy Communion, what is this wine, what is this bread, you know, uh, parents have failed to uh, explain this whole thing to them because we think children will not able to understand. But, you know, uh, it can be, it can have an adverse effect on the children as well because children, you know, they think that, uh, you know, people in church drink wine so it's it's okay for us to drink wine and that is what happened to uh, one of the children you know the when they had a christmas party the uh, uh, the friends in school said uh, you know y'all in church drink wine and all that so why don't you bring wine we'll enjoy ourselves so this child went and bought wine and when the the principal caught uh, uh, the child and the friends and the, the parents were called. Uh, the child said this, you know, we, we drink uh, uh, wine in church. So we thought it's okay to drink wine. And uh, from that time onwards, I, I uh, started saying when we, we serve communion in uh, children's church, we don't say, you know, the uh, wine, but we say uh, grape juice. Um, and also, you know, teaching when we when we give communion uh, uh, or we have the uh, uh, when we give out the communion uh, for children in children's church, um, we uh, we share or we teach them what this whole thing is about and what is the significance and what is the meaning. And I always tell the younger children who are not partaking in the communion, say, even if you're not partaking in this uh, broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, it's important for you to listen and to understand. So, you know, they, they know what is communion. They know what we are partaking in. So it's very important for us, even when we go through these various ceremonies, you know, like uh, in your churches, you might be having um, a harvest festival. Uh, uh, some of the churches, we go through this Lenten season now. We'll start Lenten just before before the Good Friday, before the uh, uh Easter, we have this whole Lent season. Uh, we also have Maundy Thursday. Uh, we also have uh, Good Friday. So teach children, you know, all of these uh, uh, ceremonies that we celebrate in church. What is the significance? What is the meaning? Uh, what God has done for us and why we celebrate or why we remember these special um, days. So children will also have a clear understanding. And, uh, and this is not just because we have to do it because God has instructed us and it's important of teaching them at a very young age. The next one is Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 12 to 13. Can somebody read that, please? Uh, gather the people together, men and women and little ones, and the strangers who is within your gates, that they may hear that they may fear the Lord your God and carefully observe all the words of his and that their children who have not known it may and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land which you cross the Jordan to possess. Yeah, so here we see that Moses is 120 years old. He's He knows that it's time for him to go. And uh, so God... Um, uh, you know, chooses another leader, Joshua, and um, uh, Moses is instructing the people, uh, the laws, and we see here that, you know, he's saying, gather the people or assemble the people, and he's not uh, leaving out children, he says, and not even leaving out women, you know, he says, gather men, women, and children, so that they can listen to the law of the Lord, and uh, Thomas, your version says little ones, right? Thomas, your version, did you read Little Ones? I thought I heard it. Okay. 
So here we see that, um, you know, um, uh, little ones, we, when we think of children, we think, you know, children may be 9th, 10th standard or 8th, 9th, 10th grade. But here it says, uh, I like this word, little ones, even the smaller ones, you know, bring them so that um, they can hear the words of the Lord and, uh, you know, uh, they can, the fear of the Lord will come upon them and they will be able to carefully observe all the commandments and the laws that God has uh, given them. And he says that children who do not know Know this law, must hear it and learn it and fear the Lord uh, your God as long as you live. So he's saying that, you know, your children's children who are going to come up, children not yet born, children who are going to be born, make sure that you teach them, make sure that they hear these words so that they can fear the Lord and, uh, you know, they can live in the long, uh, land of promise because they are living in obedience to God's word and his commandments. Then we have Psalms chapter 78 verses um, 1 to 8 here. The psalmist is saying that, you know, um, asking the people to hear the teachings, to listen to the words of his mouth. And he says, do not hide this from your children. Okay, he says, we will not hide it from their children, but we will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. And, uh, and the psalmist is here saying that we need to tell the children the praiseworthy deeds of, this, of our Lord and the power and what he has done, the wonders he has done, because he has commanded this to our forefathers. What has he commanded this to our forefathers? In uh, he's, uh, he's saying that you know, God has commanded our forefathers to teach their children so that the next generation would know him. Even the children yet to be born and even they in turn would tell their children. So he says, pass it on from generation to generation and pass it on from generation to generation, not when they become adults, but when their children keep passing it um, on. So that, why is he saying, uh, you know, pass on these laws and commandments to children and to their children? He says, so that they can put their trust in God. They cannot, they will not forget his deeds. They would keep his commandments and they would not be like their forefathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose heart was not loyal to God and whose spirits were not faithful to him. So it says teach children because children have a very, you know, malleable heart. Um, you know, they can easily mold them. And the example is given here of, a, you know, mostly when people uh, are trying to train and teach children, they talk about a young plant. You know, when they say when the plant is very young, you know, we can, if the plant is bending uh, to the left, we can, you know, uh, we can straighten it by keeping a stick or a support or tying a, you know, a rope or something like that. And then we see that the plant will start growing straight and tall but what happens if uh, it becomes a tree and the you know uh, it's no longer a tender stem but it's a, a bark you know you can't move the tree whatever you do you cannot change the position or the shape or in the direction in which it is growing so uh, uh, even when it comes to uh, children and adults children are like that tender plant you know, they're easy to uh, you know train them uh, to teach them and guide them so that they will grow straight in the ways of the lord they will walk in the paths of the lord and that is why uh, god is saying here and the psalmist is um, reiterating what God has said, you know, teach the children so that they will not forget and they would keep the commandments to God, of God and they will not be like their forefathers, stubborn and uh, rebellious. Okay. Uh, so we see that, you know, the importance God gave, gives for uh, training children in God's word. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 32 verses 38 to 41 uh, talks about how, you know, children are an integral part of the covenantal community and we saw that even when in abraham's uh, um in the references that we read in genesis chapter 17 um that you know the covenant will be passed on from generations to generations when you tell them and you teach the children and when they follow the circumcision um right so we see that children are also an important integral part of the covenantal uh, community. We can't, you know, overlook them. It's not only the older people or the youth who are part of the covenantal community or the covenantal promises of God, but also children. And this is what we read in uh, Jeremiah chapter 32, verses uh, 38 to 41. Can somebody read that, please? Mm -hmm. 
They shall be my people and I will be their God and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me always for their own good and for the good of their children after them. I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good and I will put the fear of me in their hearts so that they will not turn away from me. I will rejoice over them to do them good and will faithfully plant them in this land with all my heart and with all my soul. Thank you, uh, Dave. So here we see that you know, God is saying that I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Okay, says uh, 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 with their children and their children's children. Uh, and, you know, I'll put the fear of them in their heart, fear of me in their hearts so that they do not turn away from me. So here we see that, you know, uh, the covenant uh, that God gave Abraham was not just for him, but for also for his children's children. And here we see that, uh, you know, God promising that he will, uh, uh, you know, be the, be the God of his people and they shall be his people and that he will give them one heart and one way and that so that they can fear him and um, he will, he will uh, establish an everlasting covenant with them. Okay. So we see that children are an integral part of the covenantal um, community. Um, the next thing we'll see that children are also part of the corporate worship of a, uh, of the community of Israel. So we saw that you know um, uh, in the biblical mandate that uh, God has uh, for children, uh, or the biblical basis or the biblical mandate for children's ministry, we see that God has planned for children. Um, that is, uh, you know, of uh, the. The, uh, the family, the concept of family that was in God's mind. And um, we see that uh, God had this whole plan also of training uh, uh, not only adults and um, youth in God's word, but also children. And we also see in um, the covenantal community or the community of Israel, Israelites, we see that uh, uh, children are also part of the corporate worship. Okay. Children are also part of the corporate worship. Um, so the biblical pattern for a family uh, is that old, young, um, and children all come together uh, in praise, in worship, in prayer, in repentance, in hearing the word uh, uh, that is read from uh, the Torah or from the law, and also that it is God's plan uh, uh, for uh, children also to receive salvation and uh, to be filled by the Holy Spirit. So we see that the biblical pattern for family uh, is for all of them, you know, uh, any age group to come together in worship, in praise, in prayer, repentance, reading, and hearing of um, the scripture and uh, salvation. Okay, so let's look at uh, Psalms chapter 148, verses 12 to 13. Um, can somebody read that, please? Psalm 148, 12 to 13. Yes. Girls and young men, old people and children too, let them all praise the name of the Lord. His name is greater than any others. His glory is above earth in heaven. Thank you. So here it says that, you know, let young men and women, old men and children, let them all praise the name of the uh, Lord, for his name alone is exalted. So we see that uh, when it comes to um, uh, praising and worshipping God, that even children are, uh, are a part of the corporate worship uh, in a family or uh, in the community or at church as we look at in the present day. Okay, children are also part of the prayer, uh, 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 you know, aspect in, uh, in the family setup or in church. So let's uh, look at uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 12 to 13. Now Second Chronicles chapter 20 is um, 
uh, uh, talking about how um, you know Jehoshaphat is uh, faced with these three huge armies that are coming to fight against him, and so King Jehoshaphat tells uh, all the people, uh, you know, uh, to fast, including children, including animals, and he asks all of them um, to come to uh, the temple uh, to seek the Lord. And um, this is what we read in verses 12 to 13. It says, "Our God will." Will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes on, are on you. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. So we see that in, uh, you know, even when they are seeking the Lord in this time of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of um, uh, for of a disturbing situation or a very concerning situation when they're fa faced with three um, huge armies that are coming to fight against them. Uh, they don't keep away the children uh, at home, but the children are also part of this uh, aspect of seeking the Lord, waiting upon the Lord, praying and asking the Lord to help them. Uh, and also, you know, uh, uh, children are also, I think, we're fasting because it was uh, the king who asked everyone to um, fast. Then we see that children are also part of the repentance aspect that uh, uh, it comes when, when it comes to a community worship or a family worship time or um, uh, at church. Okay, so repentance here we read in um, Ezra chapter 10 verse 1 while Ezra was praying and confessing and weeping and throwing himself down before the house of God uh, this is because he was repenting for the sins of the whole uh, uh, people of Israel and what they have done. Uh, a large crowd of Israelites, men, women and children gathered around him and they too wept bitterly okay maybe we can say that children may not know what is happening but uh, you know they 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 would have asked their parents their parents would have said we have sinned against god and so this is how we repent this is how we ask for um, forgiveness okay so we see that children were also part of the community or the family time or uh, the children can also be part of the repentance time that we as a church do uh, you know when we repent of our sins and ask God for uh, forgiveness you know often we think that uh, you know during praise and worship or uh, during prayer time or when we're having fasting prayer you know let the children be outside playing or uh, uh, you know let them just be doing things give them something to color but it's also good to have children in the room or uh, children where you know we're having a time of fasting and praying and uh, get them to also you know uh, to observe uh, if they're in a position to even fast, they can do so, you know, so that they can learn at a very young age um, what is corporate worship, what is worshiping God, what it means to repent of our sins, uh, what it means to pray, um, what it means to give thanks to God so they can learn at a very young age and fast. But here we see that, uh, you know, children were also part of uh, the fasting part of the repentance time when uh, when the people of Israel were repenting of their sins so you know we can also involve children uh, in our family time uh, of uh, fasting and prayer if you have that or also in your uh, church okay the next thing is um, you know um, children were also part of the community of Israel when their scripture was being read uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 2. Can somebody read that please? Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 2. So on the first day of the seventh month, Israel the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women, and all who were able to understand it. Thank you. So here we see that, um, you know, um, when Ezra, the scribe, the teacher of the law, and he brought out the law, uh, we need to know that um, in the Old uh, 
Testament times, you know, um, they not everyone had the book of the law like we have the privilege of the Bible in our hands. Um, we can even have children's Bible, youth Bible, you know, any age they have Bibles, different uh, versions. But in those in the in the new Old Testament times, you know, they just had one Torah, the law that was there, and the scribe or the priest would uh, uh, read it out, and all the people would stand and listen. And so here we see that. Uh, you know, when Ezra the priest was uh, reading out the law, you know, uh, uh, the, the people who were listening to it were not only men, women, but all who are able to understand. That means children who are also able to understand were part of, uh, uh, you know, the hearing, the reading of the uh, scripture. So, you know, uh, even in our church today or in children's church, you know, uh, we can get children to read the Bible. Uh, I'm quite amazed when, uh, you know, when I, uh, or, or I'm quite startled, I must say that when, uh, when um, in children's church, when we ask children to read the Bible, they find it so difficult uh, to read uh, uh, God's word. And even if they're in grade six or grade seven, and I'm wondering why, because they have these huge textbooks and they're used to reading, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, their lessons. But why are they so finding it so difficult to read the Bible? It's because they're not familiar with the whole passage. Even if it's a very simple, familiar passage that we ask them to read, they can't read because they're not used to reading um, uh, God's word. But we see that the importance of them uh, not only hearing the scripture but also reading so not only read out scripture passages for children but also get them to read their um, bible and religion for the the book that the god has given them and we need to also instill the same thing in our children to read uh, god's word and this can happen when we do it from a very very um, young age so we see that in the uh, uh, you know uh, children who are part of the uh, community of Israel, they were part of uh, hearing uh, the reading of the scripture. Okay, before we close, we'll just look at um, the last point uh, uh, on salvation. Okay, uh, so salvation is not only for adults, but you know, we can also lead children into uh, accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. And we, we saw uh, in the beginning of this class that. Um, more than, um, you know, uh, half of the people who accept Jesus do so before the age of uh, 12. So Acts chapter 2 verses 38 and 39 uh, says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself so here it's for everyone who god calls who god work who god uh, spirit works in their hearts who's uh, those who are opened and receptive to receiving jesus christ as their personal savior uh, so not only salvation but also here we see that the promise of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is also for children. So we don't have a senior Holy Spirit and a junior Holy Spirit, but we just have one Holy Spirit who works both in an older person, in uh, an old man and a old woman, and an adult and a youth, and the same Holy Spirit can also work in a child's life. So we see that salvation uh, is also for children. They can also accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and they can also receive um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we'll end class here. Anyone has any comments, anything you'd like to share, any questions that you have? Just take one or two minutes and then we'll end class. Anything you all want to say? Anything that uh, impressed your heart? Any? So, okay. This Kiran says she's received something new. Okay. Anyone else? Any questions? No? Okay, then um, thank you. Have um, a good day and I'll see you uh, next Monday for this class. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.